Hi and welcome to Cure the Off-Road Adventures. My name is Darren and this is the Lifestyle uh, Camper Review. Um, this is a Lifestyle Elite walkthrough uh, that we purchased in 2013 and how we came to own this uh, camper trailer was by the fact that we were specifically looking for a camper trailer to suit our needs and to suit our purpose. So the camper had to be fit for what we wished for it to be rather than for how a manufacturer had designed it. We did approach several manufacturers. Um, unfortunately, the majority of them we found to be rather unwilling to alter their design to suit our fit for purpose. Um, and the other one is that a lot of them were very reluctant to partially build a camper and uh, not do some of the items, such as uh, electricals, to leave them up to us to do. Um, we was very specific on what we were looking for at the time um, and it was nine impossible to find. Now um, we did end up approaching Lifestyle. Uh, we sat down with John, the owner, and uh, he took us through um, a few options that we had and uh, in the end we did come through to a design that we quite liked, um, which is what we have now. Um, and we were then able to modify the rest of the suit. This is the result, so I will take you through it. Um, I will show you what we've done, what we bought, how we modified it, um, how we set it up for our purpose, and uh, I'll take you through the pros and cons and give you a final review on this uh, 2013 Lifestyle Elite walkthrough. Okay, first thing, um, the DO35 hitch, um, which this trailer comes with, um, has been uh, worth its weight in gold. Uh, it does allow uh, the ability for this camper trailer to um, basically uh, be utilised as intended um, off-road and uh, allows a great deal of flexibility between the um, camper trailer and the tow vehicle. Um, now, one of the modifications we have done at the front here um, is uh, specifically uh, the socket here, which is uh, designed to um, take a camera harness from the tow vehicle, um, so that uh, we've actually fitted a camera on the back of the uh, camper trailer, making it easier to um, park the vehicle. The other thing we did was um, I designed a specific um, lock um, that enabled us to um, secure the camper trailer while uh, not attached to the vehicle um, to prevent uh, theft. So what we did was we got a, a trailer hitch lock um, welded on a, a, a great washer on this side, another big washer on that side um, and it just uh, locks on. Um, and that actually prevents anybody from hooking the trailer up. It makes it extremely difficult to take the trailer. Um, okay, moving up uh, the top here, um, what we have here is we have a fire extinguisher. Um, we do, or my wife uh, was nice enough to sew up these uh, covers. So there's a um, small uh, one kilo fire extinguisher under there. Um, and uh, then we have a fuel jerry can, a water jerry can, and another fuel jerry can. Um, the reason for the water jerry can, um, although we do carry um, an enormous amount of water with two water tanks, um, sometimes it is difficult to obtain water um, easily and uh, if you've got a, a vessel such as 20 litre water can, then you can get the water and uh, bring it across to, um, to the camper and then uh, pump it into the camper from there. Um, now moving into what's in the fridge box. So the fridge box um, again is uh, modified. They're usually silver. Um, I didn't like quite like the look of it, so I did change the colour um, to black um, to match the rest of the trailer. Now there are some, several modifications um, in this uh, trailer box. So the first modification you see is um, some switches at the back wall. Um, now these switches are one is um, for the lighting, which um, is in the hood of the, the camper trailer, um, allowing, um, in particular at night, although the fridge has light, we find that uh, having a light strip at the top there 
in particular at night um, makes for a fantastic um, clarity to see what's actually in your fridge or in that box for what you need to get out and uh, we've also have a fan switch here um, this fan switch is connected to two fans um, here and uh, those two fans are uh, actually um, rotating or circulating the air through the um, fridge box to keep the temperature controllable um, and temperate. Now um, we do um, usually only run it during the day um, but uh, sometimes uh, it, it can also be run at night. Now um, it, it isn't too noisy inside the camper, um, we've always found it to be quite good. We do have two Anderson plugs, um, we used to have two angles in this um, fridge or in this trailer box um, before we changed to this one. Um, the only reason we changed to Waco is because, believe it or not, we actually had one of the angles stolen um, and we did get this uh, Waco um, 96 litre um, for a fairly good price. So there's a fridge freezer combination. Um, we got a very good deal on it and that's part of the reason why we purchased it. Um, and uh, yeah, it uh, does our needs. Um, Now up here, um, again a customised item, um, I created a, um, an engine, boat engine holder, um, it is quite comfortably able to probably hold up to a 20 horsepower motor, um, and the way, my apologies for that, um, the way it was designed was um, again uh, fit for purpose, um, it needed to provide a need um, for us. Um, we didn't want too much weight on the back of it so I've created a, a spring-loaded or fitted spring-loaded latch and it's on a um, on the swing away so if you wanted to have more room um, for getting the fridge in and out um, which normally you don't need to open it that much or simply for making it easier to take the motor off because you're standing next to it rather than standing from this fridge box it does make it easy once again um, yeah, so, and uh, the boat sits, the motor sits on there quite comfortably, this is only an 8 horsepower, um, but uh, some of the, um, you can certainly fit, especially the modern ones, um, bigger motors, so, um, okay. Okay, another modification is um, this thing here, um, the sole purpose of this is that uh, we actually fit our hot water system to it. Um, as we set the camper up, it's actually on this corner here that we put our shower tent. So our hot water system can hang off there and uh, it gets the water supplied as well as the, um, the power and everything from the front, um, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so another modification is that in this tunnel boot, which is the actual walkthrough from the other side, we do um, carry a fire extinguisher a blanket, um, we also got a speaker for our sound system, but that can be accessed both from the bed as well as from the outside if need be, um, but it is predominantly designed to be for the inside of the camper. Now, as far as the actual lid, seals, and everything else is concerned, while we're here we will show you, this is probably the most prominent one for the possibility of uh, filing, um, and it never has. So. Um, one of the only modifications that uh, I actually made in regards to this door in particular, due to this door actually having a lip behind here, we found that if water or dirt or anything got in there, it actually got stuck in here. So I did put a little hole there and another little hole over here, which actually allowed for any water, because um, obviously when it's open um, and it rains, water will sit in here and then get trapped into there and has nowhere to go. So we're putting those two little holes in, allowed the water to get out. It really hasn't made much of a difference as far as um, impact from uh, dust getting into the trial at all. Now one of the other things while we're here too, we might as well use this latch. These pressure latches have been quite good. Um, there's a lot of people that are um, concerned about their reliability, um, but let me assure you We've had no issues at all. We do find that we need to clean these out 
um, and, and ensure that there's as little dirt or dust in there as possible. They do fill up with dust quite well and occasionally put a little bit of graphite in there. Um, other than that's okay. Now the next cabinet is our secondary water tank. Now it's um, important to note that we do have two water tanks on this camper and our water tanks are actually separated. We do not have one water tank for the um, uh, connected to the other. They are two separate units. We do have a separate pump and a separate tap and a separate filling point. Now one of the things that we do take with us, this pump is reversible, so if we wanted to pump water through uh, into the camp from the creek, um, we can use one of these um, filters um, and then pump water through, even if you take water out of a water tank or something. We generally don't drink out of this tank. Um, the purpose of this tank is usually just for washing, showering, hence why the shower tent is over here as well and it makes it quite simple. Now one of the things to do remember again is um, make sure that you use a food grade hose in case you do wish to drink. It goes obviously on the other end, on the clean end of the filter so we don't have any contamination. Um, the pump, um, we've just made it very simple. It's a plug-in. Um, so we've got a little lead here which um, plugs into the fridge box into one of the spare sockets that we've got up there. The ends and sockets and um, or you can put it through the tunnel boot, there's a plug in there as well. Um, and uh, again, yeah, it'll allow us to, to um, basically control the water. Now one of the important things here, again, is although this has always been a filling station, um, because it was only ever a filling station and connected to the other tank, which is one of the things that we definitely did not want, um, unfortunately, you do get water in those cabinets and um, they don't allow for the water to get out so once again we've put a couple of holes in there um, it does let a bit of dust in but it doesn't matter too much it is just a, um, a, a, a water filling station you wash it out um, at the end of the trip and it's okay usually okay um, this one here is probably one of the greatest things these drawers now we've got two of them one on either side um, and for anybody that want to modify them, you, if you press these little latches here, um, you can actually disconnect the drawer, take it out all together, um, and get in behind it. And you can run wiring through the entire interior of the camper trial rather than underneath it, ensuring that um, the uh, camper trailer or the wiring is uh, out of uh, harm's way. Um, generally, it won't probably slide terribly well underneath. Okay, now the next cabinet here is um, our gas cabinet. Um, these clearly have to be vented. Um, so as you can see there's a vent down there um, and therefore you will get dust in them. Um, and it's also our primary drinking tank filling point and the manual pump in case the electric unit fails. Um, one of the recommendations although um, you can leave these connected as they're not connected to the stove I do recommend that when you do disconnect them we put a little bag over this with a little bit of a zip tie or something to prevent any dust from getting into that and choking it up and with the bayonet fitting here which is for the stove same thing make sure you leave the little bung in there um, it just prevents uh, the system from clogging up um, one of our customizations is that we've fitted a, a radio um, I found this to be the best location for fitting an antenna um, because it's nice and flush and even when we had the big antennas um, we were able to tie it off onto here to prevent it from being taken. Um, coming around the back um, due to the sheer length of it we fitted this to it um, it is a very long camper and with the tow vehicle in front of it it does become exceptionally long. Um, moving around here uh, again a couple of modifications so the first thing is our reverse camera um, almost a necessity, especially when you have a boat on top of this camper it ends up being about two meters tall making it impossible to see over it anyway um, if you've got a canopy on the back of your vehicle you pretty well done um, we've got a 12 volt outlet here and the next modification is we have a strip light now the strip light um, we just get, I'll, I'll just buy the stuff by the roll um, the connection down at the base here of uh, 
ensured that uh, it can be um, easily undone and replaced. Um, we just silicon to it when it comes time to replace them because they do yellow after a while and they also go a bit dodgy. Um, we just remove it and replace the the light for a new one. Um, now the kitchen itself um, is uh, again uh, not a bad sort of design and um, I think one of the probably more important things here to mention is this um, this uh, design here. Um, it, you get a bit tricky to set it up but uh, once you've got it set up it's uh, usually not good. Now we're a bit too close there to show it. Anyway, one of the other modifications we put a strip light on here. So there's the strip light on here and equally there's a strip light actually up on the boat rack here. To run the wiring through and down to there it's actually quite complicated but it can be done um, and we've done so um, to assist with lighting in the kitchen at night. Um, now we under here um, is the primary pump for the drinking water tank so we just always have to be very mindful. One of the things that we if, as far as the con is concerned and a lot of camper trailers do it unfortunately they usually just put um, a zip tie or pressure clips on here um, we replace them with ring clamps look it's um, corrugations will do some amazing things to vehicles um, and that includes camper trailers so it's really really important that uh, they're fastened properly um, we've got um, the hose from the stove which drops around the side here and then uh, where it comes out there it gets taken around to the front and plugged into the gas bottle. Um, one of the other modifications is that we actually have a, another light here. Um, that light actually enables um, for there to be light in the boot so um, at night you can actually see what's in there. And uh, here we do have our marine grade stereo and a second speaker. So it's only a two-speaker unit, uh, nothing flashy, but it allows us to switch from front to back. Um, now, two of the really important things to probably mention while we're here, this trailer is quite heavy, um, and with a boat on it, will very, very quickly reach its uh, weight capacity um, uh, to, to the max, and uh, it is important to note that uh, you pr you'll probably really need to be very aware of what you take. Um, another great feature of their design, um, it enabled a, a good cutlery or drawer or something like that. Um, we usually just put all our plates and everything in there. So I should mention too, um, there were a number of these made um, that actually had on uh, this side over here, they used to have a, um, or they still have a wooden drawer. Now that wooden drawer is okay as a pantry but uh, the drawer itself is considerably heavy and as such um, you're already adding weight um, without even um, starting. We actually didn't find it all that good. Um, we actually found that if anything it was more of an issue um, due to the weight and it was limiting to what you could and couldn't do so we opted uh, not to have that inclusion. We rather used uh, very strong um, plastic boxes. Okay, now we're going to have a bit of a look at this tent. Um, I've only set up the tent, we haven't set up the awning. Ordinarily there's a very large awning that goes, there's ordinary a very large awning that goes over the front of this um, that uh, comes out about the same size as the tent again and about the same depth as well. Now one of the good things about these tents is they do have this uh, wonderful uh, a uh, little safari roof. Um, it does create this great hollow um, and it does make a big difference to the temperatures both hot and cold. Um, it does keep a lot of the moisture off the top of the tent and also keeps a lot of heat off so it's a bit of both. It keeps the hot as well as cool and it is certainly very beneficial um, to have and more manufacturers should be using it. Okay we're now inside the camp and I do apologize for the limited lighting. Um, I haven't set up the lighting as such yet. Okay so first uh, that is the stairs. Um, these stairs are, are actually quite good um, in the fact that they do set up very simply and I'll show that now. Um, I actually think um, that for um, every purpose they are one of the better designs out there. Um, ladders 
um, I find do present some issues which I'll go through in a minute. Now, the good thing with these is that they just fold up and sit in there and thus making it very simple. They do take a bit of room and they do have a bit of weight to them, but the idea is very simple, particularly if you have young children um, that do walk up and down there. Um, this uh, up the top here, this is a, a table um, that actually rests up there. It does come down, um, obviously, and you set it up, but uh, during transit, it sits up there. And we actually always found that the space above it to make up the, the gap difference to the top of the mattress, which is um, substantial. So this uh, space between here and here, we actually find that putting bedding and so on and so forth in there was a quite good location. Now, one of the modifications that we again have done to this um, here is uh, all of this. So we have a number of switches here that control different lighting. So we have uh, a lighting for the exterior, which do activate the light on the um, that, that strip light we saw before next to the kitchen. We do have uh, power lighting there, so for this socket here, we do also have a normal 12 volt socket. Um, then we have a stair light. Now this is just a little number plate light. Um, it's got a metal cover over it, which we put on there um, purely to provide a bit of lighting for the staircase. Um, so that uh, in particular children at night could go up and down without uh, tripping and falling and look it's um, it's a fairly simple light to install um, it doesn't cost too much and it won't wake anybody else because it's quite mild now this one here is for the um, another lighting uh, switch that's uh, for additional lighting outside as well that we can utilize so you can control the lights from in here as well as outside which is quite good and then here which might be a bit hard to see but it tells you your power use and your ambitch draw so you have an idea what you're up for as far as power usage and uh, you can control a bit. Uh, one of the advantages of this camper is it does have a lot of windows so um, it does have a quite a large window here a smaller window at the end of the walkthrough which is the end of the tunnel so it does line up with the door on the other side um, then another large window above the bed and another one at the head end. Now, another modification that we have made, these do come with um, the cigarette sockets, which are uh, in here, so they do allow you to charge phone devices and so on and so forth. But uh, one of the option extra I did was I bought some of these Narva lights, which are just a touch ones, so you touch them, um, and they actually become a perfect reading lamp. We have one on both sides, so um, and they just fold back down and clip into there, and uh, away you go. So they're quite uh, handy to have, and we generally have not found them to an, an, um, accidentally activate, providing you face the lens down. Okay, now uh, one of the pros of this camper is that this is Australian made canvas, it is not Chinese imported stuff. It is made here, it's wax converter. One of the advantages of that is A, that it's a very, very good product. But uh, the most important thing is it does keep employment here in Australia using Australian product. Um, and I think that um, almost should be mandatory anyway. Um, and we have a secondary door here, and then another very, very large window. My apologies for that. And another very large window um, there that uh, allows for um, uh, ventilation. The, to set this up, you only really need those three poles and one spread up here and one spread there. And that pretty well sets it up. And it doesn't need ropes, it's pretty well self standing. Uh, we've never found uh, that would be too much of an issue. Okay, now um, there's two other um, great things about this camper that um, I do quite enjoy. One is you've got this ventilation down here, which is uh, insect screen. Um, it does let cool air in the bottom of the camper. Um, a number of campers doing that now is a really, really good inclusion, um, especially in hot days. Um, we have camped in this camper at extremely hot temperatures, um, 40 plus outside, and actually not found it too bad. Um, partially it's due to the fire roof part of it, this through the cross ventilation. As far as um, your other option is that while in the camper you can actually open the side, which is helpful, um, to access the drawer. 
to also access your power system on this side and another storage bin on this side here. Now, the storage bin here we've actually utilised to put the hot water system in, so I'll go through that a bit now. Um, okay, so you can start with the hot water system. Uh, we just um, have this hot water system in here. Um, I apologise for that horrible stuff. Anyway, um, it just sits in there with all its fittings. Um, it's secure, it's dry, and uh, when we use it, uh, when we need we utilise it. Um, we have used this uh, storage bin prior to that for other um, things as well. Um, the hot water system is sort of more of a recent addition. Prior to that we had a Coleman um, hot water system which um, is it's quite a bulky unit, certainly wouldn't fit in there. And uh, we didn't use it in that capacity um, in this camp. Okay, so the the batteries in here, um, we have 220 amp hour Amtec batteries. Um, we have gone through another set of batteries in that time that we've had the camper. Um, the original ones that came with the camper unfortunately did fail um, after about two and a bit years. So it's a bit of a shame but look they're pretty good. Um, these Amtec ones are quite good as well. We've had no issues at all with them and they've been through a fair hiding. Uh, again a slight modification there. Um, firstly we earthed the entire trailer, which it wasn't on um, the design. Uh, a lot of manufacturers won't do it, so we've actually earthed into the chassis so that um, the entire um, trailer is actually earth neutral. Um, and uh, that is an important thing. Um, it just makes it easier to fit accessories and also um, it uh, it just um, it's something that should be done realistic, really, especially if you're running um, a multiple tutor for appliances. Uh, fusing works better as well. So anyway, we've got the two batteries. Um, we in here the standard 20 amp uh, projector, 12 to 12 volt battery charger that comes with the camper. Works really well. Never let us down. Um, I do run a BCDC Red Arc um, 1240 uh, from the vehicle um, into this, and uh, between the two, um, these batteries are full very very quickly. Uh, we do have a fuse panel back here slightly modified to what it came with and obviously I've put a shelf in here and on this side here we do have a 240 volt 400 watt inverter it's only a very small inverter um, usually just for things like charging laptops um, and maybe if the kids want to watch a movie or something uh, we don't usually so sort of take 240 volt appliances it's not um, not the purpose for going camping while we're here, I just want to talk a little bit about this floor. Um, one of the really um, good designs is what they've actually done, and unfortunately not all manufacturers do it, although they should, is they actually bring that uh, floor up slightly. Um, and by bringing it up, um, it does create a, 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 an edge that prevents water, um, especially groundwater, from coming in. Now, um, as earlier mentioned, uh, in the Cape, uh, in 2014 we were up there um, in extreme conditions and uh, believe it or not um, one of the um, uh, incidences or one of the occasions um, where we had uh, literally about a meter of rain in a matter of a couple of days we were actually grounded because everything was flooded roads were closing left right and center um, and we were stuck um, just north of Cooktown um, as a result of it um, and uh, we actually had very very minor water ingress into this camper despite the fact the extreme rain fall um, and I can show you where that was so we had a very minor amount of water ingressing in here in this corner um, which was predominantly because the amount of water sitting here was sagging creating a little bit of a pool here. Um, the amount of water we're talking about is literally three or four tablespoons, that's it. So with all the, the water, all that rain that we had, um, it's, it honestly was just that, a couple of tablespoons of water um, and everything else um, we had absolutely no issues with and there was no other water in Grace Inches camp. Look, um, to sum it up, um, we utilised the camper for what it was designed to do. Um, doing 
the things a caravan can't or is limited in doing. It d held its own, it certainly withstood everything we threw at it and as far as the advantages of having um, uh, this style of cam camper that's uh, manufactured in Australia, so it's actually designed to deal with our conditions. Now every camper or caravan in Australia, be it made here um, or manufactured here or assembled here, everything will have foreign components in it. Components coming from China or Japan or Europe or America or that sort of stuff and that's okay. Um, but if we can all just uh, focus on buying camper trailers, caravans that are actually made here in Australia, we will help our local industry and we will help our local um, economy and uh, most importantly provide employment for people in this country. Um, similar campers um, that have been, or campers that have been made to look similar or appear similar to this one, um, which were blatant uh, rip off of this design, um, have not withstood as well. Um, I do personally have two friends who have bought uh, camper trials that were not manufactured here, that were of similar design or similar build or one which was actually a blatant copy of this design and this build. Um, they both experienced quite serious failures, um, shortcomings um, and complete breakages. Um, one camper ended up on the back of a truck getting towed home uh, and another camper um, is, uh, has experienced so much damage that uh, it's a uh, virtual write-off. Now this camper, Hippie behind me, we have done multiple such trips and never experienced failures. We have uh, bottomed this trailer out on more than one occasion, my apologies. Um, through the washouts um, where you just can't pull up in time. Um, so we've actually compressed the suspension to a point where it was, the tyres were actually touching the base of the, um, the mudguard um, and we could tell that by the fact that the paint was gone. Um, the stone chips and damage underneath the trailer were quite brutal um, to a point I will I will show some photos um, of that later or as part of this clip I'll, I'll insert them into it um, but uh, the damage to uh, the underside of this camper was drastic um, now one of the, the things that I do do is I use steel seal um, which is a Lenlon product um, on uh, my vehicle as well as the camper and then uh, re-coat the underside um, where, wherever there's paint missing, I'll, I'll, I'll reapply um, a good coat of like a blackjack or a, um, a good coat of two-pack um, if it needs painting. Um, other than that, look, um, no real issues. Um, the camper is, is very, very well equipped. It handles the environment very well. It's certainly built fit for purpose. Um, as far as the cons are, um, if you do travel a lot, and you do big stretches um, and set up and tear down uh, every day or even uh, you know four out of five days a week um, it does get a bit much um, being a soft floor it does take a while to set up um, as the setup is right now behind me it took me personally on my own about five minutes to set up it will take me about ten to put away um, but that does not include DNX or anything else so there is a bit more work involved. You always have to look for flat ground um, because of, and, and, and obviously make sure there's no sharp rocks or sticks or anything because you, you are setting up uh, a floor. And also, as it side folds, um, it does present some limitations um, if you are pressed for space. Um, the advantage of a hard floor over something such as this soft floor is that you can do uh, usually find space um, that you can set up in much easier. And that's predominantly due to the fact that um, you're, you're setting up in your own footprint um, or in the footprint of a vehicle, tow vehicle that you got in there in the, in the first place. So, but um, look, all in all, um, I really have to say to Lifestyle, you had a very, very good product there. It is a very big shame that you've stopped manufacturing. Um, they, due to the incessant copying of their camper trial designs and products, um, there was no, it was no longer viable, unfortunately, um, I believe. Um, 
I stand correct if this is incorrect. However, they um, they have now gone into hybrid only design and uh, will no longer be manufacturing soft floors at this stage, at least anyway. And look, that's um, that's their decision. Um, it is a regretful one, I think, um, because their products are very, very good, um, and we have never found uh, to be a fault. And I would certainly recommend them as uh, as a very, very, very good off-road camp. Now, the reason uh, we're doing this review, um, firstly we've had it for a number of years, uh, as we got this in 2013, um, so I can honestly give you a very, very good and very honest opinion and review of what this camper is like, but more importantly, um, this camper is now sold, I have sold this camper and uh, we are moving on from this, so one of the, the things I'm looking to do now is to actually um, look at a small off-road van or a hybrid. Now there's a vast array of manufacturers on the market. Um, we haven't at this point made any decision on who or what type of hybrid or small off-road van we will buy. But uh, we will be looking um, around in the coming few months and uh, making a decision on uh, what's suitable. Um, I want to see um, whether it is feasible um, for somebody who really does want to see Australia and explore it, whether it is feasible to actually travel um, utilising a hybrid instead of a camper truck. Thank you for watching this Curiosity Off-Road Adventures production. Please subscribe to our channel if you wish to support this content.